Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to put focus today back on how buying a four-wheeler is a dream for lakhs and lakhs of people in our country. I'm sure most of you plan your finances in way in advance where you are either saving up for a vehicle or accommodating its EMIs in your monthly budget. Buying a car essentially is nothing short of a major milestone for countless middle class families in this country. It has an aspirational value attached to it. It's an asset that makes you feel confident and in most cases it's considered more than just a possession. It also has an emotional value attached to it. But what happens when the authorities seize your vehicle in broad daylight simply because they can? An asset you worked hard for, paid taxes on just to be picked up and sent to the scrapyard? This is what many aggrieved citizens of Delhi are complaining against. That their overage vehicles are being impounded from private spaces and gated communities. Sure, the NGT order on scrapping overage vehicles should be followed. If these are unfit, polluting vehicles, of course, they should be sent for scrapping. But a due process has to be followed. Simply towing cars away from private spaces without any notice is a clear case of citizens' rights being trampled upon. At Mirror Now, we are running your campaign, Old Car, Not Pay Car, for the second straight week. Over the past one week, we have had several residents join our campaign and even call us to share their stories of what they claim has been harassment by the government. We are opening up our phone lines once again for you to share your story with us. But before that, listen in to what the BJP MLA Ram Veer Biduri had to say. Sir, my first question is, we are doing this campaign on the campaign of Mirror Now, which is the Delhi government's drive, which is a 10-year-old diesel vehicle, which is a 15-year-old vehicle for petrol, which was scrapping for it. But now, the people who are complaining about the way that it is implemented, they don't get any prior notice. After that, the transport department officials come to take the car, so bouncers come to take the car, which is what the citizens have done. How do you think about it? देखिए सैकड़ों लोगों की तरफ से मुझे शिकायतें मिली हैं और सरकार को थानेदारी नहीं करनी चाहिए सरकार को नोटिसेस भेजने चाहिए दिल्ली के चीफ मिनिस्टर को मीडिया को बुलाकर स्टेटमेंट देना चाहिए और सभी न्यूज़पेपर्स में और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया पर भी सरकार को ऐड देनी चाहिए जिससे कि लोगों को मालूम हो सके घरों से गाड़ी उठाना सड़क पर कोई व्यक्ति अपने परिवार के साथ यदि कहीं किसी बहुत जरूरी काम के लिए जा रहा है सड़क के बीच में गाड़ी रोककर गाड़ी छीन लेना मैं समझता हूं कि ये किसी भी सरकार के लिए उचित नहीं है and our call-in lines are open. The numbers are flashing on your screen. And right now, I have a caller joining us in from Bengaluru. Dr. Kishan, good evening. Thank you for taking your time and calling us here at a mirror now. Please go ahead and share your views. Yeah, I have uh, four points to make. The first is uh, uh, there has to be a complete review of these guidelines and probably a review by the uh, Supreme Court to take into account uh, 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 car owners above the age of 60 who are retired. Because people who are retired uh, after 60, uh, their economic capacity to buy new cars is limited. The second is uh, the transport department of Delhi has to have clear guidelines and norms on how uh, the Supreme Court decision is executed. The third point I would like to make is that uh, if there is high-handed behavior from government officials, uh, this is not going to change until uh, 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 citizens go to the court and the court uh, uh, issues a decision that the compensation comes from the salary and pensions of high-handed officials. What normally happens is if you go to court and your car is destroyed, 
or if there, if you die from a pothole incident, uh, the court gives you a compensation of 10,000 or 10 lakhs, and all that comes from the taxpayers' money. So it doesn't hurt the pocket of the uh, uh, the government official who is apathetic or high-handed. So until courts start to fix the responsibility on high-handed and apathetic government officials, things will not change in India. Uh, and I really like Mirror now. I watch all the channels, but I think Mirror now really uh, does the country a great service. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you so much for calling us here. Do stay tuned and uh, watch the entire coverage of our special campaign as the call-in lines are open. The numbers are flashing on your screen. And right now, to discuss this further, I'm joined by our guest this evening. Kushan Mitra, who is an automotive journalist, is joining me live right now. And so is Rajiv Bharadwaj, who's a public servant and citizen rights activist. Well, thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here. Good evening to both of you. You know, we just got that call of Dr. Kishan, who was calling us in from Bengaluru. And he says that the court has to fix the responsibility. Unless that happens, unless the people, the aggrieved people, the vehicle owners take the matter to the court, the high-handed behavior from the government's end is not going to change. I will take that question to uh, Mr. Rajiv Bharadwaj, who is joining me right now. Mr. Bharadwaj, it's really come to this now that every single individual has to take the legal recourse now to be able to get their due because that's perhaps the only way they can get some compensation or a penalty. Right of the different citizens. And each and every experience which have been shared on your channel in itself reflect an offense. An offense being committed by none other than the public servant themselves. So what, what they are doing in this case, whosoever is the vested interest involved in the system, they are misrepresenting, uh, misrepresenting the NGT order and Supreme Court order. That is That is my observation. I may be wrong, but... I have done a lot of research on this, and I, I even sought the information under ITI from the transport department. And on the basis of those documents and going through the Supreme Court order, I can safely say that the Supreme Court had never had the occasion to examine this perspective from the Motor, Motor Vehicle Act angle. And there was no pleading before, neither before the NGT nor before the Supreme Court. Now you can see all the citizens are not that law they no, don't know the law in letter and spirit. They just have a feeling that some injustice is being done. Now, even after five days, not a single clarification coming from any government authority in itself is an indicator that the intent of Supreme Court is being misused at the implementation stage. So whether it has to go to Supreme Court or the government on its own will review it, the better option is let the government revisit the issue and, if required, get it reviewed legally. Okay, okay. Let me take a question across to Mr. Kushan Mitra, who's also joining us. Mr. Mitra, you know, what do you think? Uh, should this entire policy be reviewed? Should it be brought under? the notice of the Supreme Court and the NGT to perhaps review it, like uh, Mr. Bharadwaj was saying, that Supreme Court hasn't really had the occasion to be able to review this entire uh, you know, policy from the automotive perspective per se. Uh, Mr. Mitra, what are your views on it? Um, it should be reviewed, uh, but I think for other reasons as well. Uh, firstly, since the policy was first announced uh, quite a while ago, we have moved into a new emission norms regime that is the Bharat State 6 emission norms. Now, the Bharat State 6 emission norms are extremely strict, uh, particularly for diesel vehicles. The diesel uh, vehicular norms came down dramatically from Bharat Stage 4 to Bharat Stage 6. We skipped Bharat Stage 5 in India because uh, we wanted to bring down vehicular emissions. Um, a Bharat Stage 6 diesel car emits one quarter or even less of the pollutants uh, that a Bharat Stage 4 vehicle does. It is important and imperative that the courts re-look at this issue. And uh, as I've argued on your channel in the past few times I've been on, uh, 
it is uh, the court should realize that a lightly driven old car is cleaner for the environment than a brand new vehicle in terms of absolute carbon costs. If you look at the overall carbon cost, as automotive journalists, when we review cars, we look at total cost of ownership. That is not just the cost of running the car, but also the cost of service and maintenance and accident repair. So we should look at the total carbon cost of all products. Um, electric cars obviously are far cleaner in terms of tailpipe emissions, but to produce a new electric car involves you know, mining, not just the iron for the body of the car or the, the bauxite if it's aluminium, but also the lithium, the cobalt and nickel. Uh, these are, that's all mining is damaging for the environment. So we should encourage the fact that with the right pollution under certificate and vehicle fitness certificates, a vehicle should be run as long as possible, as long as it meets emission norms and fitness norms. I mean, um, if some cars don't meet those norms, they should definitely be scrapped. And uh, yes, uh, as your various scholars over the days have mentioned, what about senior citizens? Uh, young people like you or me, we have an income, we can buy a new car if our car got scrapped, but what about somebody who's on his pension, his or her pension? Uh, what about them just because, and they might be just using their car for five or 10 kilometers every day for them to scrap a perfectly uh, good vehicle that is well-maintained, has done you know, 15, 20,000 kilometers just because it's past the age gap is... I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's uh, 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 that's uh, ethically fair. Of course, you can say that the law is, but uh, law says something. But I think it's time for the government, for the the courts themselves, possibly to take Suomoto uh, notice of this. And I really appreciate what your channel has been doing on this front. Well, absolutely, Mr. Mitra. But let me take the question across to Mr. Bharadwaj. You know, Mr. Mitra was saying that as far as senior citizens are concerned, there are several callers that have called us in to say that there should be some reconsideration for those who are above the age bracket of 60 years because they may not be able to get that sort of money accumulated to buy a new car. Many of them maintain the car really well. It's beyond the emotional bit. It's about a constraint of sorts that the government perhaps uh, could factor that in. Do you think that is also an area that can be relooked into? The law has not been amended. Whatever the expectations and emotions being expressed by the citizen on your channel, the law exists to address all of them. The thing is that nobody is coming forward and taking the responsibility within the government that something has gone wrong, now we have to correct it. And this boldness, I, I, lacking of this boldness is the suffering of the citizen. Now, whatever you are telling, even after, see, the 10-year clause is nowhere in the Act. 15 years is the age of the vehicle. After 15 years, there is a provision of re-registration or getting a, 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 a new fit a certificate. If your car is fit, then you, you, are, you will get uh, uh, beyond 15 years. If it is unfit, it will not be given. But arbitrariness, that I will not going to consider your fitness. I'm not going to give you the re-registration. This is nowhere in the law. So whatever is happening, it is purely confusing. And I am surprised why all the legal communities are keeping silent. And you cannot expect every citizen to run after the court where their, their cost of litigation is the more than the cost of their car. The, the, why this is coming up? Because of the cost factor. Every citizen, if they are expected to go and go before the High Court or the Supreme Court, their legal expenses will be more than the cost of their car. And that is where this uh, the high indebtedness on what you can say, the state the sponsor and anarchism is uh, uh, successfully being done for the last one or two years. So whatever you are telling, the law is there. Now the problem is with the enforcement. And the problem is, with, is that the government is completely silent on this. Why not the uh, concerned department, the concerned minister come forward and have a debate on this? That is that is the take. Whatever I'm hearing on your channel, the law is there. They are what, what they are asking, it is their legal right. It, it is that, that their legal right has been trampled. What, what they are using, NZT and uh, order and Supreme Court direction. 
what what is that it is purely the suggestion given by the government and by the way of the giving a suggestion and the suggestion getting accepted by the court it doesn't change the law made by the parliament even even the national scrapping policy which has been declared it doesn't say that there will be automatic uh, uh, scrapping of all the vehicle it, it clearly says that with the, uh, the vehicle which has not been re-registered, the vehicle which has failed in fitness test, the vehicle which has which has not been extended beyond 15 years. So all this, how this will happen? There is a separate section in the Motor Vehicle Act, and a citizen who has purchased a vehicle has every right to exercise those rights. So why that that rights is being taken away arbitrarily? And this is where the grievance is, and this is where the citizens are aggrieved, and they don't know the law. That, that's why they're thinking. And as far as the pollution is concerned. You see on the website of the Transport Department of Delhi, after the vehicle, diesel vehicle of 10 years and patrol vehicle of 15 years, you can successfully transfer those vehicles to certain districts. Because I belong to a state of Bihar, I know there are more than 20 uh, uh, districts in Bihar where, where I can take my vehicle, and I have taken one of my vehicles there. So a vehicle under the Motor Vehicle Act is unfit in Delhi, becomes fit in Bihar, how is it possible? The act applies uniformly. It doesn't make any discrimination. You show me a single discrimination under the act. So it is, it is under another aspect. When you when you talk about, about the pollution, it is simply transferring of the pollution. A thing which is pollutant in Delhi is... Absolutely, Mr. Bharadwaj. Hold that thought. We have another calling of the, us in right now. Country. Mr. Ved Prakash is, is calling us in from the national capital. Mr. Ved Prakash, good evening. Thank you for taking your time and calling us here at Mirror. Now, please go ahead and share your views. It's a pleasure and honor for me that I am talking with Mirror now. ये बहुत बड़ा इन्होंने नाक में दम कर रखा है सरकार के लोगों ने जो खास तौर से दिल्ली सरकार के हैं. Can I go in Hindi? Yes, Mr. Prakash, please go ahead. You can talk in Hindi as well. मेरी प्रार्थना ये है अरविंद केजरीवाल साहब की सरकार ने ये जो जबरदस्ती क्या नाम है गाड़ियां उठा उठा करके जो ले जा रहे हैं ये बहुत बड़ा एक माफिया है इनका और मेरी गाड़ी इतनी बढ़िया है बिना पूछे मेरे से उठा ले गए गाड़ी को आपको कोई नोटिस दिया था प्रकाश जी नहीं नहीं मेरे को किसी भी तरह का कोई नोटिस नहीं कोई बात नहीं मेरी गाड़ी इतनी बढ़िया कंडीशन में है कि शायद इनमें से कई आदमियों की नहीं होगी जो रूलिंग में है और सीधा स्क्रैप यार्ड ले गया गया आपको कॉम्पेंसेशन दिया गया हाँ जी, जी। है जी आपको कॉम्पेंसेशन मिला सीधा स्क्रैप यार्ड लेके गए आपकी गाड़ी को नहीं, उसके बाद? कुछ नहीं मिला और उल्टा और उल्टा मेरे पे जुर्माना लगा दिया पंद्रह हजार रूपए का तो कैसे देखते हैं ये पूरे वाक्य को कैसे देखते हैं इस पूरे घटनाक्रम को मैं तो माफी चाहता हूँ एनजीटी के नाम पे नेशनल ग्रीन ट्रिब्यूनल के नाम पे बहुत बड़ी कार माफ कार जो मैन्युफैक्चरर हैं उनके शायद आदेश होगा इन लोगों के साथ में अभी हम लोग जो है कोरोना से निकले हैं हम पे चार पैसे का भी कोई इंतजाम नहीं है अब दूसरी गाड़ी लेने के लिए चार पैसे नहीं है इनको इस बार थोड़ा सा ध्यान देना चाहिए था कि इस पॉलिसी को अगर लाना ही था तो बहुत जरा आगे करके ले आते शुक्रिया अवेद प्रकाश हमारे साथ जुड़ने के लिए और सारी अहम जानकारी हमसे शेयर करने के लिए मिस्टर मिश्रा यू नो वी जस्ट हर्ड वॉट मिस्टर वेद प्रकाश वॉज से he says that post covid already people are reeling under a lot of financial burden they are still trying to grapple with their day to day lives they are coming back to their work and he claims that he was perhaps fined a penalty of 15000 rupees where he did not receive anything as compensation so these middle men who are working how are they anything better than thugs that is not really for me to comment on uh Unfortunately, I have not seen any of this in and around where I live in South Delhi, but I've heard of this in some very posh colonies of South Delhi where people's cars have been taken away. Uh, some of them just like have argued, like Ms. Vedh Prakash, that, you know, COVID, their cars really didn't run for two years, uh, you know, in 2020 and 2021. Uh, 
uh, should some you know compensation be given there? Uh, you're supposed to get the scrap value for your car and keep in mind that uh, commodities are really expensive. Older cars have a lot of steel, a lot of yes. copper, a lot of uh, rubber. Let me the put battery, that question across, Mr. Mitra, inside. to the BJP MLA who's joining me right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sorry? we'll try and reconnect with him. But yes, please go ahead and uh, complete yeah, yeah, what you I'm saying that the Mr. car has a lot of scrap value. And uh, if your car is being towed away, you have at least, uh, no matter what car it is, whether it's a small car or a big car, you have at least one to two lakh rupees of scrap value in the vehicle. And uh, your vehicle cannot be taken away without giving you the adequate compensation. Even the Vehicle Scrappage Act uh, has that in it. I also would urge the central government, uh, the Ministry of Road Transportation and Highways, to um, quickly implement the older vehicle rules because they have been talking about uh, rules that okay. they, you know, older vehicles, vehicles past age of 15 years that uh, can stay on the roads by paying a certain fee every year. Uh, I see no reason why that should happen. I'm sure people would be happy to pay. Mr. Mitra, hold that thought and have to more. interject. We have another caller calling us in from the national capital. Mr. Anil Sood is calling us from New Delhi. Mr. Sood, good evening. Uh, please go ahead and share your views. Uh, good evening. I want to suggest one thing here, first of all. You know, when this uh, uh, restriction of 10 and 15-year-old ca uh, came in, that time we were having Euro 4 petrol and Euro 4 vehicles. Today we have Euro 6 vehicles and Euro 6 petrol, Euro 6 diesel. Then how come there is a pollution first of all? And something very strange, we are seeing the cars. Now one Airbus pollutes equivalent to 336 cars. Who is checking pollution of aviation? Who is checking pollution of aircrafts? Delhi does not have pollution only from cars. It has got pollution from aviation. It has got pollution from uh, this uh, thermal power plants. It has got pollution from national highway. And it has got pollution from therm uh, this uh, 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 marine industry. So they have picked a very soft target. By design, IIT Kanpur is the culprit behind which has given this false report to the CPCB that yes, uh, aviation does not pollute Delhi, which is 110% false. And CPCB, despite their manual contrary to uh, IIT Kanpur report, has endorsed this. So this whole issue has been created and encashed by Mr. Nitin Gadkari in favor of industry. People, citizens are, do not matter for these politicians. They are guinea pigs. They, they are not bothered about... But Mr. Sood, we cannot really besmirch uh, any uh, buddy's uh, reputation over here without having valid facts in place. But thank you for calling us in. Our call-in lines are open. The numbers are flashing on your screen. Do call us in and share what has been your experience as far as old car, not big car. But right now,